Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 18.5 beta 3. iOS 18.5 beta 3 is available to developers and iOS 18.5 public beta 2 should be out soon, either by the time you're watching this video or sometime tomorrow. Now iOS 18.5 still supports all iOS 18 supported devices, and this came in at 956.3 megabytes on my iPhone 16 Pro Max. It was about the same size on the other devices, maybe a little bit smaller depending on the device. Along with this, Apple also released many other updates, such as iPadOS 18.5 Beta 3, WatchOS 11.5 Beta 3, along with macOS 15.5 Beta 3, tvOS and HomePod OS 18.5 Beta 3, VisionOS 2.5 Beta 3, and a few older Mac updates as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then general, then about. And as you can see, the build number is 22F5053J. This is a bit odd as the previous build had an F at the end and we've seemingly gone backwards. Typically we would be maybe at a D or B build, but at this point we're at J. So there must have been some issues with it that they thought this build was better. Now we do have a modem update in iOS 18.5 beta 3, hopefully to help with overall cellular connectivity. And we also have carrier updates for many. If we go into our settings again, go to about, and as you can see, the carrier is 64.0. So that's been updated for many carriers. When it comes to new features, changes, and updates, well, we do have a couple little things to talk about, but this is more of a bug fix update so far. The overall update itself with iOS 18.5 doesn't seem to have as many features as previous versions as Apple is working on iOS 19. Now, one good thing is RCS messaging is now supported on geo networks in India. Also, it seems that Airtel now has access to 5G standalone. That can be found in your settings, go to cellular, and under voice and data, you can see 5G standalone on your carrier. If it's included, it says 5G standalone uses 5G for all cellular activity, including cellular network connections. I typically leave this off as I find it uses more power where I live and switching sometimes to LTE helps with battery life. So I let it switch on its own. If we go into the Apple Vision Pro app that Apple added recently, you'll see that it says new in spatial gallery app. Step onto the set of Ted Lasso to explore the making of and more. So this is available now. This is also available on other devices with this app, but they just updated it within the app itself. If we go into news for the first time, we had a new splash screen. So I went into that and let me show you what that looks like. I had a splash screen going over the new cooking section or food section. It says your subscription includes 70,000 plus recipes from premium publications conveniently and beautifully presented. So that's something we got recently with iOS 18.4 that they're highlighting here with a splash screen. The other updates in iOS 18.5 are few and far between. One of them has to do with mail, where if you're using categories, you can see a little hint that you have all mail options there. And then in the upper right, we have the three dot menu where it shows show priority and show contact photos. So that's a small update there. We also have an update in photos where they've removed something again from 18.4 betas. They brought it back with beta one and then removed it again. So that was under photos and you can see under recently deleted, we no longer have the option to delete all at once. That was a really nice feature to have, but they've again removed it and it's been gone since beta one. Apple Care Plus has a new UI, and one of the bug fixes I noticed in this update has to do with Apple Care in general. So if we go into general, and then we go to Apple Care and Warranty, this now works for me. While they redid the overall menu and the overall look of it, the Apple Care and Warranty menu itself never worked for me. Now it's loading properly. You'll see here as it loads. And now it's telling me this device is covered, more devices that could be covered, some of the recent ones that Apple has that I still have here. Now, as far as anything else, there is no battery intelligence at this point. Maybe they're saving that for iOS 19 and other releases today include things such as Apple fitness. Plus, if we go into an email, they sent, and in an email they sent about fitness plus it says celebrate global close your rings day on April 24th with exciting new workouts and earn a limited edition award. When you use your Apple watch, keep up with the program collections and new episodes released weekly. So that's something they sent out. There was also an educator email as well. If you're an Apple educator, as far as bug fixes, well, airdrop seems to be working much better for me where it wouldn't airdrop to this device before specifically videos just wouldn't work at all. It seems to be working properly. Now Genmoji are working just fine. So if I go into messages within messages, if I go to my Genmoji here, I can create maybe a turtle with a top hat 
and let's see what happens here. So it seemed to be working for me earlier and it may not look like you want, but let's see what we've got. It didn't place it on his head, but you get the idea there. It actually created it, but not exactly how I wanted, but that's typical of basically Apple intelligence at this point. Also visual intelligence seems to be working properly. No issues there. Some people were having issues with that and type to Siri seems to be okay now too. So you can ask a question, create a new event, read messages and more, and it seems to be working. So far, there's no micro stutters. I've been testing that on the iPhone 11 as well. I haven't seen anything. Of course, initial loading times are going to be a little bit slow, but things such as scrolling, whether that's a first party app or third party app seem to be nice and smooth so far that could change in the future after a few days, but so far seems to be resolved. Also, many are saying Apple CarPlay is resolved as far as the wireless CarPlay issues that were resolved in iOS 18.4.1. Let me know if that's resolved for you as I think that will take a few days to test and make sure they've actually fixed it. So if we go into our notifications, those are nice and smooth, just going into that. And also if we swipe home, the wallpaper bug is still there. However, sometimes it seems more dramatic than others. At first it was pretty severe. Now it looks like it's better. So it may be a little bit hit or miss. Maybe they finally fixed it. As far as release notes, well, if we take a look at Apple's public facing release notes, you'll see on their website, if we go to release notes, they're the exact same release notes as beta two. I compared them side by side and they haven't updated anything. I really wish they would add more details, letting us know what's different, what they've fixed, things they're testing so that we can provide real feedback in the feedback app and let them know that they've resolved those issues. Now, as far as the next release, I would expect iOS 18.5 beta four as soon as next Monday, it seems we're on a weekly release schedule at this point. Maybe we'll have an RC on the 5th of May and maybe a public release on the 12th. Apple hasn't given us specific dates yet, but that seems likely. Also iOS 18.6 beta one could release that same week, maybe the second or third week of May as Apple's working on that. And we know that as Mac rumors sees it in their analytics. Of course, iOS 19 is the focus since we're just a couple months or less than a couple months away on June 9th. We'll see that at WWDC 2025 with iOS 19 beta one betas throughout the summer and a public release of iOS 19, typically in the second or third week of September. That will be a little bit before the iOS or iPhone 17 launch rather. So that's what we can expect as far as that goes. When it comes to overall performance, well, animation stutters and things like that seem to be nice and fast this time around. If we go into weather, you'll see it just takes a second to load the data, but overall it's fast. Go into camera, it opens quickly. It was even faster on the iPhone 11 there. If we go into something simple like settings, go back out, go back in. Oh, we got an unauthorized option here when we go into the Apple care option. So that was under Apple care and warranty, a little bug there. But if we go into things such as music, scrolling is nice and fast. Things such as ProMotion seem to be running at 120 Hertz, no real issue there. And of course, 60 Hertz on older devices, but in general, nice and smooth. So no problem so far. Of course it can take a few days and those can sort of creep in, but so far it's nice and smooth. Ram management issues seem to have been fixed for most people with beta two and seem to be about the same with beta three and overall heat is quite good. In fact, I noticed right away after installing this, that it was much cooler than before. So that's something that I think is good. Even running intensive tasks seem to be a little bit better. I don't know if there's just some performance optimizations or something else, but of course we'll check that in the weekend follow-up video. As far as battery, well, again, we'll check that in the weekend follow-up, but let's take a look now what we currently have so we can compare it later on. Battery health, we have 100% capacity with 179 cycles. If we take a look at the last 10 days, yesterday I only had 2 hours and 50 minutes of screen active time, 4 hours and 33 minutes of screen idle time, and used about 65 to 70 percent of the battery the day before i used almost 100 percent of the battery and only had four hours and five minutes of screen active time so hopefully it improves with beta 3 that would definitely be a bonus for that and be welcome as far as overall storage well i did check that briefly let's go ahead and take a look we'll go into iphone storage here i have ios 18.5 beta 2 on the left beta 3 on the right and if we scroll down you'll see we're taking up less storage overall as far as the operating system 6.28 gigabytes for apple intelligence but ios is only taking up 12.38 gigabytes they've reduced it by 
a gigabyte or so. So maybe they're optimizing code, making it a little bit better and freeing up some storage. So I think that's great news overall. If you're wondering if you should install iOS 18.5 beta three, well, at this point, if you're on beta two or any of the current betas for 18.5, definitely install it, provide feedback. When you have an issue, make sure you do that in the feedback app and provide that information to Apple. Other than that, though, if you're on iOS 18.4.1, I would not install this. If you're trying to fix an issue, trying to achieve better battery life, it's a beta and I wouldn't recommend it at this point. You could try it out, but you're not seeing a ton of features so far. As far as overall benchmarks, well, I did run it a couple different times and the best result after everything finished processing in the background was quite good. 3,509 for single core, 8,715 for multi-core. The first one was a little bit low. I ran it three times total, but it's definitely better than we've seen in a while from any beta. So that's a big improvement there. So that's everything with iOS 18.5 beta three. With the build number going backward a little bit, I really didn't expect any new features or changes. So there are some small changes, but the overall usability may improve greatly, but we'll have to wait and see. Again, check back for the weekend follow-up video with that. And of course we should see iOS 19 features as far as accessibility features about mid-May or so. So maybe in less than a month, around the 15th or so, we'll see those features and that will be our first look at what might be installed in iOS 19 as well. Let me know if you've found anything else in iOS 18.5 beta three. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.